So previously we saw that lots of alleles are lost by random chance in each generation, and I mentioned that advantageous alleles can also be lost, but obviously advantageous alleles kind of are a little bit less likely to be lost. So let's think about a situation in which we're thinking about our three genotypes with their fitnesses W11, W12, W22, and we're going to represent these fitnesses 1 plus S, 1 plus HS, and 1. Right, so here the capital A allele is advantageous relative to the lowercase a allele, and whether it's dominant, codominant, or recessive depends on what the value of that H is. So now let's think about a population, and we're going to have a bunch of lowercase a individuals kind of represented by those black dots, or lowercase a alleles represented by those black dots, and then a single capital A allele in that population, right? So this is a new mutation has created a new allele. So this is a population, uh, let's think about the situation in which we have n minus 1 of these individuals, and 1 of these individuals. What's the probability that this allele is the one that fixes? Um, we're not going to do the derivation, but it turns out that probability is twice the heterozygote advantage, right? So this advantage here, that the heterozygote has over these individuals, that HS term, twice that is the probability of fixing. And then how long does that take the time to fix? Well, here... Technically, you actually get all sorts of like um, weird double integrals and horrible things, and it's just a mess. Uh, so let's um, make a scary face or something here, because um, we don't actually want to calculate those sorts of things. But we do know it's less than 4n. And in fact, um, it hasn't been published yet, but if h is 1 half, then in fact this time to fix um, 4 over s natural log of n times s plus 1 is an equation that can be derived. But as I said, this isn't really kind of in textbooks or anything yet. But the main thing here is it's very, very complicated, but it's faster, right? That allele, if it fixes, fixes more quickly than a neutral allele. And that makes sense, right? Because um, selection should be pushing things along. This was actually also a simplification. The actual probability of fixing the actual equation, probability fixing starting from a frequency of 1 over 2n is 1 minus e to the negative 2s over 1 minus e to the minus 4ns. When you have fitnesses of 1 plus 2s, 1 plus s, and 1, you would get this equation here. So you may see this equation um, written in various textbooks. But this reduces to twice the heterozygote advantage um, in general. When s is small and when n is large, you get that simplification. So let's do an example um, using these equations with actual values. So for our example, let's think about a situation in which a, the capital A allele, is say 10% better. than the alternative, the deleterious allele. So that would be a situation in which A S is 0.1. Remember our fitnesses are as so. Um, let's have it be codominant. So now the heterozygote is intermediate. So what's the probability that this allele fixes if you have a population with only one copy, um, the probability of it fixing from a single copy is twice the heterozygote advantage. And so if you multiply that out, 0 0.1, that's 10%. What if A was 1% better? Now you would be using S of 0 0.01, same H. That probability 
would end up being 0 0.01, which is 1%. And so this is a really kind of interesting thing to note that this allele is much better than this allele, right? Like a 10% advantage. So individuals have a 10% better chance of surviving to adulthood, or they have 10% more offspring. This would be an adaptation that would be meaningful to an individual, quite an advantage, but even so, when an allele arises that gives the mutant that 10% advantage if it was a homozygote, and even gives it 5% advantage as a heterozygote, that allele only has a 10% chance of fixing. And if it's a 1% advantage, it only has a 1% chance of fixing. And so what this means is, if it's got a 10% chance of fixing, there's a 90% chance of it being lost. If you have a mutation that improves individuals by 1% in the homozygous state, there's a 99% chance those alleles are lost and don't get fixed. So that actually means that most advantageous mutations that arise over time are lost. What to me is the most kind of striking implication of this is that the evolution that we see, the evolution that has occurred on Earth throughout all of history, it's actually only a fraction of what could have been Over history, a large number of advantageous mutations that would be adaptations if they became fixed were lost just due to stochasticity and random chance. So the amazing amount of evolution that we've seen, these major changes over the history of Earth, the gigantic biodiversity that we have on Earth now is just the tiny fraction of what was possible that made it through this kind of randomness caused filter that caused most of these advantageous mutations to be lost. And that's actually one of the most surprising results from population genetics is it causes us to fundamentally think differently about how much evolution has occurred from being kind of an amazing overwhelming amount to less than could have been.